DRS Clips, India's smartest podcast, brings you India's smartest YouTube channel. Make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit the bell icon. So, uh, Eric, could you explain Neuralink, Elon Musk's Neuralink to a four-year-old who's listening to this podcast? Not that there's four-year-olds listening to this podcast, but, uh, you know, what? what's your simplest explanation of it? Yeah, th- th- so turning your brain into programmable hardware, I, I think, is the, like, um, controlling like the way the way Elon Musk puts it is um, reducing the latency between like your brain and the real world. Um, so if you can type at 100 words a minute, that is a like data transfer mode of however many megabytes per second. And if you can actually like turn the brain into hardware and make it extensible so that you can automatically connect to the internet or download information faster than you can read it, faster than you can listen to it, faster than you can um, and export faster than you can type or speak, all of a sudden you're like the feedback loop between what your brain can do and what the, you're affecting in the world is much, much tighter. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, crazy. The implications of it are pretty, uh, wild. I mean, you get through like one or two interviews with him. I'm far from an expert on Neuralink. Uh, I just think it's like a cool thing to learn about and listen to and, um, and fantasize about. I think anybody who's like close to the science would say it's still like a ways away. Um, so I don't think you have to like worry about this in the near term, but like in our lifetimes, it's it's one of those things that Elon Musk likes pushing on. That's like, ah, there's no f- reason why the physics aren't possible. It's just really, 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 really hard. And so if we just start like working on the problem, um, you know, maybe 20 years or maybe 70, um, but, but we may get closer to it. Yeah, that's why Elon is such a fascinating inspiration for so many entrepreneurs all over the world. He just takes on these difficult problems and says, you know what, let's try it. Let's see where it goes. Um, uh-huh. You know, but even with the Neuralink, when you when you think of all the positives, there's so many um, uh, applications of it. For example, if you want to get more disciplined in life, probably there'll be some kind of app in the Neuralink which will help you get more disciplined. Or if you want to stick to a diet, or if you want to become more punctual, you can actually change the way you are as a person to benefit those around you and to improve your own capabilities. Have you seen this movie called Limitless with Bradley Cooper? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, so for the listeners, it's basically uh, a movie where he takes this pill which kind of expands the capabilities of his brain. So he becomes smarter, faster, uh, nicer, and he just gets more shit done in life. So within a month, he becomes one of the country's top stockbrokers. He tries becoming the president in the movie. Lots, lots of things happening. But uh, Eric, I think you were saying something about Elon Musk right now. That's why I interrupted you. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's just interesting that he, like, the the mental model that he uses of like, is there any reason in the physics why this isn't possible? Like, if no, then let's try it. L- then let's at least keep mm. working on the problem. It, like, it almost doesn't matter to him how hard it is. It just matters, like, is it possible? And if it is possible, like, he'll push on it and he'll work on it. And he'll, like, um, you know, getting to Mars seems so, like, infinitely huge of a problem. And getting hardware into our brains, like, seems so infinitely complicated of a problem that most people wouldn't even try it. And I love his attitude of just, right. like, why not? Like, there's only one way to make progress. Like, yeah. you got to start chipping away at it. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so that that's the issue with Asia in general. Asian countries don't, like, people are kind of taught to aim just for stability. People are taught to kind of limit their own thought processes. But because of the internet, because of globalization, because of podcasts like this, American mindsets and American schools of thought, or international mindsets and international schools of thoughts, are kind of making their way into an Asian teenager's head. And it kind of opens up your possibilities. Like when I was a teenager, no one told me that you could become a content entrepreneur. But then once you actually get to it, you realize, oh shit, this was possible. Why didn't anybody just give me that little bit of hope? Um, so I, I mean, that's that's kind of the intention behind this podcast as well. Uh, and that's, that's my next question to you. You're someone who studied Naval Ravikant in detail. Now, Naval Ravikant is someone who Indians look up to a lot because, you know, when, when an Indian sees another Indian doing well on an international stage, you're like, hey, that's, that's, that's our guy. That, yeah. That's our guy. That's, that's the emotion. Uh, 